Welcome to Tat TV's The Group Chat, the series where we talk about things that girls chat about in the group chat. So I'm Taylor Patrice, and to my left we have Gabby, Amina, Lex Loger, Beats by Jazz, and to my right, me. And that's on period. period. When is it time to move on from a relationship? When you gotta ask that question. Oh. I mean, you know when you tired? Tired. You gotta ask. You gotta ask. I feel like I'm always questioning myself though. Like I'm very indecisive just in life. So me asking a question isn't necessarily because I want to do something. It's just because like I'm always thinking of some bullshit. Like mm -hmm. you guys knew half the stuff that went through my head. Y'all be like, oh my gosh, this girl looks crazy. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like for me, like, my last relationship before the one I'm in, I was in it for seven years, got him tattooed on me, all that little shit. Ooh. And for me, it was just like, you know, again, like I said earlier, once you're growing as a woman, as a person, you just really realize what you're not going to deal with. So, like, mm -hmm. for me, I'm 18 years old. I got a car. I'm working. I'm doing every fucking thing for this relationship. But you ain't working. You ain't got no money. You ain't <laughs> got no money. <laughs> oh, my God. You ain't doing none of that. So, nigga, you had to go. And I'm not talking about it. was abusive. You know what I'm saying? Pouring yeah. beer on me. Like, we oh, arguing, fighting. the first time, yeah. The first time, no. the, you got to set your own boundaries and when they get anything disrespectful that you feel like it's nothing that you need to talk about, like abuse. You leave, yeah. But if you have those boundaries, you never talked about them, and you didn't realize that you were offended until it happened, mm -hmm. then you, yes, revisit that conversation. And then if they don't change, then leave. Mm. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> okay. Um, I got engaged when I was 20. Mm. Um, you couldn't have told me that I wasn't going to spend the rest of my life with that person, but we literally argued all the time, like a couple weeks or days before we got engaged. We were arguing, like throwing shit in the parking lot like it started <laughs> she like, I this is before I, I calmed myself but it would start in the house and then we'll go outside and I would be like behind his car daring him to back up like you're not going nowhere we still talking mm -hmm. so um but my type of attachment style like would not let me let it go even though like every part of me was like yo this ain't right like so it's like you have to get com like completely fed up, like almost resentful, like I hate you, almost slap yeah. you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Like everything they do just start annoying you. They start to become ugly. The sex ain't hitting no more. <laughs> like everything just become like ugh. Like mm -hmm. bye. So I feel like for me. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're okay. I was going to follow up with uh, Gabby said. Like I do have that same type of attachment. It's really hard for me to let go of things. Typically, in all. I would say all my relationships, to be honest, they have left me, but I was grateful that they left me because I didn't have the goal or like, you know, that much courage to leave mm -hmm. them. Sometimes, like Whenever like like said, sometimes you get in a relationship as a woman and feel like this is the all end all, tell all, be all. Like, mm -hmm. and we gotta realize like, once you step out of that, you like you, it's like a breath of fresh air. Like, mm -hmm. there is more out here. I'm de deserving of more. So yeah, yeah. I think most of my relationships that ended it was more so like i was fed up but i did have one relationship where it wasn't that and i was like do i really want to end this or not and i did go through a constant battle with myself but i think it was for the good that we did in the relationship um and i think that honestly i just knew that we were not compatible we didn't have like he couldn't do what i needed him to do mm -hmm. and it was always a topic of conversation and because of that and because it was repetitive um i just decided that like yeah no this is not yeah because i mean who wants yeah. to repeat this all the time like, i'm irritated to repeat myself to a fucking child mm -hmm. like why do i want to repeat myself to a grown-ass man just as well as vice versa on that end they don't want to like right now i'm gonna be honest my issue with my relationship that i feel like my nigga will leave me for like he's in jail and he still could provide for me mm -hmm. so it's like when it comes to me you know i'm out here i'm living i'm kicking it nigga like i'm doing what i gotta do so when he asks me for something or he need money it's like damn bitch like i'm gonna drop up a dime for you but when it comes to me it's slow feet mm -hmm. you know so it's just like you know, you just... But that's the first step, recognizing it, yeah. too, though. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know you don't want to leave, because you recognize that you're willing to fix it. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. it could be a problem. Oh, snap. Like, that's another thing, too. Like, your man could be messing up. 
does he want to fix it? Mm-hmm. You know, because like, we mess up. Do we want to fix it or are we, are we done? But I do think I agree with you. You gotta hate them because mm-hmm. you have to hate them. What Taylor like, said, <laughs> you will keep questioning that shit. Like, yeah, I what's we were supposed to? Like, should I have done that? If if you don't let them per se ruin your life, then you're gonna let them ruin your life. Is <laughs> it's done when they ruin your life? Yeah, I think. I mean, like you say, hate them. I think it, once you're mentally checked out, you could be physically checked out, but not mentally. Right. How so? About when you more so you look in the mirror and you realize that you're not the same mm. i think that's mm. for me now yeah. that i'm learning is when it's over it's like when you can feel it in your body i was talking to my therapist about this yesterday because i emailed her like 50 times because she only had an appointment like two weeks out i was like now nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like right now, she's like, it's like cognitive dissonance is when you can feel something in your body, like you can feel it in your heart, like to your, to your toes that like, this is affecting like your everyday, Mm -hmm. like wanting to get out of bed, go to work, Mm -hmm. do do anything. Um, So I did, I don't want to go into this, I will. (laughs) I've been with my current partner off and on for like seven years and a couple weeks ago I ended up telling him like... I am not happy like I am emotionally like checking out from you because of this this that and the third so am I ready to leave no because unfortunately if I love you I'm going to see the good in you till the end mm-hmm. and I'm going to focus on that um so I'm just trying to work on putting myself first a little bit more because mm-hmm. I don't know how to be selfish when it comes to other people but mm-hmm. I definitely agree because I feel like me as a person and who I am, I often fill up everybody else's cup and mm-hmm. my cup oftentimes run empty. Right. Yeah. Um, and like I had to realize, take a step back, like therapy is always like, I say to anybody, like if you need someone to give you a clear opinion and help you through something, mm-hmm. therapy is always a solution. So I realized through therapy that, you know, I'm so worried about everybody else's cup being full or at least, you know, almost full that oftentimes there's nothing left in my cup. For me and so like i told you earlier we we're still individuals and although we're with someone we still have to we have our own self desires and mm-hmm. we also need someone to pour into us as much as we're pouring into them that mm-hmm. i think the suckiest thing to be in a relationship and feel like you're the only one fighting for it to mm-hmm. get better because like you know what's the point kind of thing. i read something that said the way you fill up other people's cup is to overflow from yours mm-hmm. you don't pour from your cup you overflow when yeah. i read that it made so much more sense I'm like you know what you're right because if I take care of myself just like I wouldn't want to affect any of you guys negatively if I say something and you're like oh see I don't like that because I respect you guys I'm gonna fall regardless if I agree with it or not I'm gonna but okay when I'm around her I'm not gonna do that right yeah exactly. her, I won't bring that up yeah and that's just what I not that I agree with it but I yeah. listen to your values right exactly so hold yourself to the same level that you the same accountability that you do that man. Mm-hmm. You're telling that man to stop being so repetitive. Look at you. Mm-hmm. Remind right. yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think that's deep. Yeah. Okay, y'all. All this right. It's about to be a conversation. I'm about to crack. Okay. All right. Do you believe in the 80 20? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this because I'm gonna be all the way real with y'all. I ain't never had a man fully take care of me ever in my life. I have lived with a man where he paid his bills. I was just there. But, I mean, shit, like she said, a relationship, shit, it may be 30, 60. It may be either 30, whatever, 40, 60 or whatever. Like, I mean, a, a relationship is gonna go up and down. Like, because, like you said, most of the time nowadays, women are the breadwinner. So it is already, nigga, 90, 10. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel like when he do, I feel like that do go a long way because me personally with my relationship, I feel like my dude loved me the way he do over time because I stayed down. You know what I'm saying? Like, if nothing happens overnight. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, hold your nigga down the best way you can, you know, rather if it is financially, emotionally, whatever. And if he love you, when it's his turn, bro, he gonna make sure you ain't gotta go no percentage. I think that's the other thing. Like, I think all we do, especially nowadays, is talk about finances. And although that is very high on the list, because in order to, it doesn't bring happiness, but in order to survive, especially nowadays, I mean, you need funds. And, uh, the cost of living, the cost of food, everything is going up. So, like, that is extremely important. But, like, what about mentally? So, like, for example, when you were talking about, like, you couldn't get in touch with your therapist, I need somebody that's going to be able to, like, take their emotions out for a second and talk to me how 
maybe, you know what I'm saying, my therapist, not necessarily, but you know what I'm saying, would. Like, for example, Sierra is very open-minded. So if there's ever something that I'm going through and I, like, truly need, like, advice, and I know, like, she's the friend that's going to give it to And I give it to me. factually, not emotionally. Yeah, not emotionally. Like, so don't come to me either if you don't want the truth. Because I'm like, <laughs> what you know? Cancer. Real. <laughs> Water. Water. Yeah. Are we talking like 80 20? Like, that's why Mary, why did I get married? No, or, I think like, 80 20 <laughs> is only like reasonable if you actually love them. Like, you know, and 80 20 is only reasonable if like you can actually receive that from them. Like, people who's can the say that, like, yeah, who's, the, who's the 80? Who's the 80? Yeah. I think it should be 100 100. Ooh. But, like, at the same time, like, how can, like, can you give yourself 100 every single day? Like, mm -hmm. you know, so, like, it makes sense, like, when you're in a partnership, like, that not every day is going to be, like, equality. Like, you know, not every day is going to be equal. But, like, some days you might need them to step up some more. But at the end of the day, it's more than just also talking. Like, I feel like, like, in my past relationship, we just talked. Like, that's all it was. Like, it, it seemed like it was good because we were communicating Fine. so well. But... It really wasn't communicating very well. It wasn't understanding each other, and at the end of the day, it was like more manipulation than communication. Mm -hmm. Like, it, and then at that, yeah, it's literally brainwashing. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's just like, is this really? Are you really giving me eighty twenty? Are you really, or are you just trying to make me into who you want me to be? Like, it, it's kind of yeah. like kind of. So way. for me, for the eighty twenty rule, I feel like I believe. I don't believe in the eighty. Okay, so one, can you explain the eighty twenty yeah, rule so I can make sure I answer it correctly? Oh, are you saying? Are you saying? Are you saying like you you put in eighty percent and I and I, I, the person I'm only receiving twenty, or are you saying I put in twenty percent and the person is putting in eighty? I'm putting uh, both ways. Yeah, so, so I'm seeing it as like you're only going to get eighty percent of what you want from a person from a person. Like you're not going to. Yeah, get I think it's more. Okay, okay that's, that's why I was confused before, too. I was like, what's the, Who's the eighty percent? What is that? So like my perspective is a little bit different because I don't believe in monogamy. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't need this person to even be 80 because I have the freedom to ethically go get other, pursue other people that are going to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that you can get everything that you need out of one person. So mm -hmm. I have, do I want to call his name my partner? Like he's not really my partner. Like. They'll come over and give me dick, and then <laughs> it's a relation. It's a no, chicken. It's, it's, it's a chicken. It's a chicken. It's a superior. It's a superior. I didn't start like liking him until my primary partner did something that pissed me off, mm -hmm. and then their responses were the same, but how they reacted to me telling them how they made me feel was different. So that's when I actually started liking this person and we had a conversation mm -hmm. about that. So I think people have unrealistic unrealistic expectations when it comes to what they get, what they should get mm -hmm. from from their partner. Like, so cut me off if you want to, but I follow this porn star. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> stop, no. <laughs> His name is King Noir, so he explained it like, I don't like B2K. Um, so I'm not going to go to a B2K concert with my wife because fuck that shit. Mm -hmm. But if she wants to go with somebody else who who likes it, like, why would I tell her no? So I don't feel like we should be telling people, like, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. Because mm -hmm. you're not getting it from me, you're not going to get it from anybody else. Like, that's not fair to right. me. Right, and that mm -hmm. drives people away. Like, and drives yourself mm -hmm. crazy. And that's, I think so, uh, that's um, another thing is... Um, I, I picked all of you guys because you guys have like different views. So I'm very excited that you're a part of this <laughs> conversation and you chose to be a part of this conversation because I do have something, a, a question in regards to that. But like, um, yeah, that's a very interesting perspective. And I think for me, because I do believe in monogamy, I'm more so of the person that's like, okay, you don't like it or I don't like X, Y, and Z, but I'm going to do it because I love you and I actually genuinely want to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm not in love, then it's like, no, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. it, but even with my friends, like if my friend asks me, like, you want to go to this play? Like, I don't like watching plays. Like, so, but if I love you, like, girl, you want to get up? Shit, we might as well go to this play. And I might honestly might end up well. liking it because I genuinely love you as a person. Mm -hmm. right. But that's just how I am. So it just depends. Like, if I don't like you, like, I'm not. Yeah. For me, so, for the eighty, I'm sorry. You can go. go ahead. Oh, for me, just the eighty twenty is. I I also believe in monogamy, but I also believe in. Um, 
unrealistically i believe that if there's something that you aren't doing to fulfill me i feel like i should be able to go get it elsewhere but i also believe in having that conversation and, and acknowledge letting you know what i'm missing especially if it's something so big like say for example sexually if you're not a, a guy that likes fellatio you don't want to like i don't do head you know i like to receive it but i don't want to get it you i don't feel like you should be mad at me if i decide to go get it from someone who doesn't have a problem giving giving it especially when i've made it vividly clear to you that i'm more of a clitorio comer so i need <laughs> head to be having right. healthy yeah. sex life so but you're going to deprive me because you want to have that much authority and control over my life that mm -hmm. you know i don't like doing it so you shouldn't want it no yeah. this is something technically you don't like doing it but this to me i feel like i need this in order to have a healthy sex life so it's like you gotta be realistic i'm gonna give you that opportunity to say like i'm missing x y and z and i need that but if you decide that you know you can't give me that you can't be upset in the same breath if i go get it, if I go get it from elsewhere mm -hmm. i agree with both of those both but it also needs to be a conversation because niggas don't like when you do them how they do you mm -hmm. right yeah. <laughs> oh girl that's why i'm single because i'm okay with acting accordingly <laughs> so my question to the 8020 it is like more so this is more on the men's side mm -hmm. like a lot of time men want us to be submissive without the hundred percent mm -hmm. niggas want us to cook clean take care of the kids Y'all walk the time. dog do the laundry help with homework and in reality all you do is just go to work can mm -hmm. i say something to that mm -hmm. just like we're not men, but I can only imagine that men deal with women who don't want to fuck them and only want money. Mm. Men or women who don't cook and only want money, etc. So that's our responsibility to not be delusional mm. and treat a little boy like a grown man. And that's that man's responsibility to not take care of a girl who can't even give him head. Like you said, you can't even give me head. Why am I cash out? I haven't even mm. seen you in person. Mm -hmm. But these men cash out them and we call them simps. <laughs> so what are we if we taking care of them, the men? Or right. fucking these men who aren't dumb. I feel like technically you will never really get a uh, hundred percent or eighty percent from a man because just how as women who we are in our a lot of our characteristics, especially like in a household running it. For me in my household, you know, I'm the cooking, I'm the cleaning, I'm the um, entertaining of the kids and this that, and the third, right? My my man has a job or a career that makes him need to be more available for that. Mm -hmm. You're a financial provider. That's only 10% of this household running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he feels like he's doing a lot, but that's not true at the same time. Right. And it, he won't, it, not say he won't, but sometimes they fail to acknowledge, mm -hmm. oh, that's on my back. Because from the moment I get up, I go to, I have a full-time career that's thriving and I'm enjoying it, right? Mm -hmm. So I get off work four o'clock. From the time I get off at four o'clock, I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm attending to kids, I'm making sacrifice to my career. Like, whether I got to leave work early or whatever the case is, I'm willing to make those sacrifices and when you get to come home, and I, I'm not going, I'm not getting off my feet until nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. You come home, you get to sit down immediately, you get to play your game, you get to enjoy your day, right? Mm -hmm. And also, you still want me to do all of that, and you're not going to acknowledge. Are you okay with that? I'm. I feel like I'm okay with it to a certain extent. To me, that to me, I'm not okay with that, and that's just simply because I'm doing 150 and you're doing 50. So I'm only okay. I'm, I'm only okay with it because there. I'm not gonna downplay anything that my 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 person does. He does a lot beyond uh, financial support. Like he mm -hmm. supports our kids. He shows up when he needs to. Mm -hmm. He's not a man that I have to chase outside all the mm -hmm. time. You know what I mean? He has his flaws. Many of them. So do I. Mm -hmm. But I I feel like this portion of me, given all that, is because I want to. I feel like you're deserving of it because of the type of man you are. You do deserve that space to come home and your house already be a home and it's already running and that's but, submitting because right. he provided that for you exactly mm -hmm. but don't don't confuse me wanting to do these things so I, whatever man i want to you know i want to be able to provide this the way i was raised i'm a southern belle so i want to be able to give you all of this as a woman mm -hmm. But don't confuse this as it's not an obligation i don't gotta do nothing to make your day go round. let right. me ask you guys this what does submit being submissive mean i guess to you it's equivalent to me just just like if how men always argue the, the finances and everything is if you can submit to me and like i get my tire changed my car gets cleaned out mm -hmm. like like just manly shit. If we yes. want to go ahead and be sexist and do all that, mm -hmm. my trash needs to be taken out. My car needs to be cleaned. My, my, my car needs to be fixed. My mm -hmm. own needs to be changed. 
I can ask you for $20, I can ask you for $200, but if I can't get that submission from you, how the hell do you expect me to want to do it? It's not that I can't. Mm -hmm. How do you expect me to want to do that when I just changed this tire by myself mm -hmm. and then now you want me to drive to your house to drop your food off? Mm -hmm. Like, ew. Yeah. I and like I just changed my own tire. I feel like a lot of men don't know how to show up if it's not financially because mm. it's mm. been well, that's deep. Mm. <laughs> yeah. well, we are <laughs> Misogyny is ingrained in society, especially American society, like a thousand percent. So now we're making the money. We have a career. We have our own place. We have mm -hmm. our own car. A lot of them are looking like, well, where do I fit into mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. So they have to, mm -hmm. you have to show up emotionally. You have to figure out ways to make my day easier. But if all you've been taught is to provide, 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 mm -hmm. it's going to take you a while to figure out how to be how to show up in other mm. ways that I yeah. need. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what I was saying in the last episode. We're in this like weird transitional period where like we're we're I guess essentially kind of switching roles or yeah, figuring out different, different roles. roles in life. Yeah. Generals are so fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, like, that's why I say yeah, 100 cuz I agree with you, I mean, like we can't give 100% to ourselves every day, but that's why you need a partner that gives 100% because I'm giving you my all. And if my all is only 20%, then that I need your all to be. And if we're both only putting in 20%, we're, we shouldn't be bashing each other or you like to say we're human. Mm -hmm. We should just be low together. We both lost our job, we're both homeless, then we're homeless together. Mm -hmm. But if I'm still working and you lost your job and you made me a stay at home wife, you lose your job, I'm gonna go get a job. Mm -hmm. Or because I'm not, I don't believe in legal marriage, my credit's good, baby. <laughs> go get a loan in my name. Mm -hmm. Your shit might be fucked, but that's okay. Because as your partner, you can use my credit card until you get your stuff back together. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we're not married and your stuff didn't affect me. Mm -hmm. So I do agree that like, if you guys have that 200%, you should both be equally as happy. Mm -hmm. If he provides the 100%, you only got 70, you got an extra you know, percentage to play with right there. Mm -hmm. You know what you said? Hey, we should all be equally happy. I feel like a lot of times when we get in these relationships, we look up to the other person to make us happy. Mm -hmm. Like they're yeah. responsible for our happiness, mm -hmm. but in reality, we gotta get to a space where, and I'm still learning that I'm responsible for my own happiness. I'm responsible for my anger, my pain. Yep. Let me take accountability for everything that's going on in my life. So mm -hmm. when you get to a space, which I'm trying to get to, I'm trying, yeah. when you get to a space where you're happy with yourself, everything that you do is extra. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a blessing that you're making me happy and you're putting the effort yeah. in, but I gotta make my, ha my myself happy first. That way I can help you be happy as well. Now let me ask you this, because I know that there are people out there like this, so I agree with you 110%, but what about for those people that are out there that making other people happy makes them happy? And when they don't have that, then therapy. I mean, you can make <laughs> someone else. I feel like you can make somebody happy. I, I, I do feel like making other people happy is a good thing. You can make someone else happy, but I think therapy is cool, but you also have to get to your root cause and figure out why. Why, why, why does making someone else happy you know why is that bringing you so much, much, bring you so much joy because you being happy should be your priority too mm -hmm. and when you make other people happy go back to that overflow in the cup don't I pour in overflow i'm i'm so I'm happy overflow. i'm 110 percent happy so when i give you happiness mm -hmm. i'm still over 100 mm -hmm. yeah i'm not giving you my charge per se i'm not yeah. giving you my happiness i think for so long i was that person that like um wasn't well, making other people happy made me happy. And I think it's because of the way, I don't want to say I was groomed because I don't like that word, but mm -hmm. the way I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, it is society, but even my family is a little bit different. I feel like the way that I grew up with them, I thought that my beliefs were their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so when I disconnected myself from my family and took some time away, I had to really ask myself, does this make me happy because this is truly how I am? 
or it's because I felt like this is what they wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And I went through that for about a year. Um, these two probably know. I mean, back and forth yeah, yeah. to the point to where I didn't even decorate my house because I needed to know, is this my style or am I trying to prove something? Mm -hmm. When people look at me, they're like, oh, that's the bougie chick. Da, da, da. Okay, yeah, you might put me in that category or whatever, but am I really that? Or am I just trying to prove that, like, I can hold my shit together to my family. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now yeah. I went and bought this mirror. Okay, I really think that I like nice things. However, <clears throat> I had to really dig down deep and figure out who the fuck mm -hmm. am I? Mm -hmm. Like, who am I as a person? I don't think people are aware of how much your upbringing has an impact on your mental until you start, like, really figuring out, like, who you are as you grow. Like, my mom will say this thing. She was like, you are not the same person that you are from 20 to 21 to 22 to 23 to 24. That's true. Like, yeah. so on and so forth. So, like, I'm not from here. I moved here from D.C. about, like, three years ago. Okay. And I worked with all these white girls. And fresh out of high school, they're moving in with their boyfriends. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at me like, you live by yourself? Why don't you live with your boyfriend? I was like, why? This is my first time on my own. Why the fuck would I want? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a couple boyfriends. I can't, I can't all fit here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would I want to live with someone, like live with somebody else? So you do have to like figure out like who you are outside of your parents. Like they do, they do shape you. But when people don't think about like having kids, like, Yes, you have a baby, but that baby is going to grow up into a person, yeah. their own person. Mm -hmm. So you don't get to decide that this is how they're going to be for the rest of their lives. And then mm -hmm. if they step out of that, then like, yeah, what? Yeah, I agree. I think even my like view on um, raising children, I don't have any kids, but I want to be an open minded parent and I think like obviously I can't 100% take out my bias but I am going to try my hardest to pay attention to who they are because I feel like even me with like technology and the things that I do I've been doing this for years like before like even on my space like I mean people was making videos but I had like a whole little production like back in the day so like I just kind of wish that my family would have like paid attention mm -hmm. to that and instead of shaming me for you know well why do you put everything online actually like mm -hmm. you know try to figure out why i was doing the things that i was doing but um yeah i think that that's interesting too because you cannot shape your children like they're going to grow up to they're not yeah. carbon copies of you yeah right. you should be raising an, an individual like yeah your kids will lie to you because i was that like my mom was definitely um the mom that was your friend but she was definitely a mom you know so if I ever cross the line too much, it does definitely discipline me. But even with that being said, I have an aunt who is a friend to their parents or to their children, and they don't per se do anything that needs discipline. I mean, they're teenagers, they're kids, mm -hmm. but she just talks it out with them. Mm -hmm. Whereas some parents might beat you. Mm -hmm. Some parents might disown you. Some parents might um, make you think it's okay, but then use that for manipulation later. Mm -hmm. So. It, I feel like your parents definitely uh, reflect your life in general, mm -hmm. but yes, dating, having children, things like that, because you don't really heal from that until 25, 30-ish anyways. I feel like everyone has childhood trauma in some type of way, and I think I would, like, for me, with my upbringing, I wish my mom would allow me to be that individual person more versus trying to beat me and not saying beat me but you know yeah, yeah, back then. beat me into submission <laughs> yeah, we was getting beat you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. for sure. For sure. two times really yeah. okay okay so my I mom was, she, i was getting my tail tore up yeah boxing. so and i feel like i'm like don't beat me into submission like uh, one thing that makes me have to try to grow out of now is that when I was a kid my mom always would say like oh you're a kid you don't have an opinion mm -hmm. and that was something that I felt like I didn't have an opinion on a lot of things like mm -hmm. even as a, a young adult and I feel like now I'm trying to, to learn to not be too opinionated like mm -hmm. I, like one thing that I'm working on is not everything doesn't need to be addressed and every opinion doesn't need to be said so mm -hmm. that is something that I only I'm acting out against what she said. Oh, I never had an opinion for 18 years. So now you vocalize. Now, now I'm over vocal. Yeah, you're overdoing. Yeah. So I can be a nag. I can be a picker. But I, it's mm. not intentional. It's just the trauma that I dealt with is mm. like trying to outgrow them and be my own person. But I feel like overall, you know, as with kids like my my kids, like I'm learning what you know each year. I'm learning to allow him to have that space to be himself. I'm learning that I can't make him like me because for a, a while. 
um i was living in this unrealistic world like okay why does he like rap music like let me turn out you know rock off let's listen to rap da, da, da. but i had to really sit back and think about it like look i tried to tell him like you can be whoever you want to be as long as you're not nothing crazy and i'm yeah. here to help you and provide this safe space and like i try to tell my kids all the time lying to me is worse than stealing from a store yeah. because if you lie to me then i can't trust you so I, me and my kids have this big thing of just being honest all the time no matter if it's big or small and not they know this now that I'm going to get in trouble if I tell you a lie. So I might as well go ahead and tell you the truth, and you probably will be cool with the situation anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then, then you can actually guide them and nurture them as a parent. You right. You can actually teach them. That's another thing. Don't punish a child for ignorance. That's your job to teach them. They're ignorant. Right. They're Side children. note. I feel like, and I'm like, I'm not a big whooper. Like, you know, yeah. I'm a threatener. Like, I'll beat your tail. But mm -hmm. they, my kids know. Like, they're just going to, like, sis ain't going to pop a grape, okay? If she does, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a tap. Right. No, they know, okay? You know? Right. 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 Um, but, no, for me, though, for me, um, I take it back to where I've been thinking about it lately. I feel like, like you said you was only beat once or twice. So, from where I came from, it's like I was beat, like, and I didn't realize how much mentally it can affect you. But when you really sit down and think about the physical beating, so I'm from Georgia, whatever, and my family, um, they, my family is from Georgia as well. So the slaves, they moved to Ohio to migrate. But the men in those, uh, the men of slaves, they were beat way more than yeah. women. Mm -hmm. So they were beat by their masters to be submissive. And so what did those men, like, after they got out of slavery and their women wasn't listening, what did they do? Mm -hmm. They beat the women into submission and you got to follow these rules. So what the women do to the ch kids, you not listen, I'm going to beat you. So it's a cycle and it's like a chain we have to break. Like, we always look at white people, oh, you don't beat your kids. You know, It's not okay to put our hands on other people mm -hmm. because you're telling them that if I do something wrong, it's okay for anybody to put their hands on me. I don't agree. But we gonna we gonna get into that. I don't agree. Not anybody. Not anybody. Not anybody. Not anybody. Not anybody. I don't feel like not anybody, but I feel like somebody was. I'm being my kids. Well, but I'm trying to say this. I'm saying not anybody, but it does it identify to people, and that's women that it's okay for anybody that loves me to put their hands on me because, like you know, you had your aunts and uncles that were able to put their hands on you, but that's not okay because now you're in a relationship, right? And it's okay for you to put your hands on your man. Can I ask a question? Because you did bring up being an abusive with relationship with your ex, mm -hmm. right? You don't think that has anything to do? I mean, I don't know how you were. Do with what? I don't know because you, you didn't say nothing about your parents. Does that have anything to do with you whooping your kids or you being whooped? No, like, kids? I feel like, I mean, I got my ass whooped. I wasn't no saint kid, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I did what I wanted to do, and it came with consequences. And those consequences was getting my ass whooped. And believe it or not, it helped a little bit because mm -hmm. I didn't go back doing the same shit because yeah. I know I'm about to get my ass whooped. Yeah. But if my mom just talked to me and say, oh, don't do this, and nigga, I'm going back to do it because you ain't do shit. You just you know, I, let's keep going what I do. My mom whooped me. I didn't get my ass. I didn't get up. Uh, yeah, with me. a belt. Yeah, with a belt yeah, or yeah, a yeah. switch. And yes. I wasn't gentle parented either. She just whooped me. You yeah, know? same here. And so to same, me, same, same it same. was worth it. I'm going to go do it because all I get is a whooping. I'm sneaking out. That's me too. I'm sneaking out. You said you didn't do it, and I feel like I disagree. I, I, you tell you know you wouldn't do it again. If I got beat, I would just find a different way to do it that yeah. I didn't get caught. Yeah. I'm gonna be more well, creative. See, I got we one, and then I'm going to punish me for like eight months at a time. So I want to do that. I want to go out of sight. I want to be outside. See, I know that. Me personally, growing up, I'd rather get a whooping than be on punishment. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when I have kids, obviously I'm gonna pop them. Yes, I think yes, like that. Not necessarily beating them, but I'm gonna put them on punishment before I whoop them, especially at a certain age. Yeah, you're gonna want to live life. With kids, all they want is TV, technology, games, yeah. and shit. So you snatch that away, they gonna act, right, act right real quick. Right, that's why I So I feel like, like it is different now. Like you say, back then, yes, we got whipped. If you whip your kid now, like my brother went through it, you know, he, he whipped his daughter, which I'm not saying it's okay for you to leave any marks on no kid. Now, I'm not with that. But, I'm okay with whooping. But lighter like, kids, it's gonna be a little red mark. It, it's gonna be something like they done soft in parenting. Here so much to where it's like people are scared to put their hands on their kids yeah, yeah. because like you say nowadays people want to be their kids friend before their parent no be their parent first you can be their kid later i mean you can be their friend later i mean you won't be able to be their friend if they get in trouble before 18. oh we're gonna we're gonna talk okay, about sorry, right yeah. we're gonna talk about we're on it yeah i'm sorry yeah, I'm no it's okay it's okay because i think that these are good topics and i think um and let's be we mm -hmm. have something in regards to bringing um, us more so millennials and then parents and talking about some things that like okay. 
Yeah. Okay? Period. Okay. Now let me ask you guys this. If you see that your friend was in a relationship that you felt like she should move on from, what would you do to approach it? Um, I mean, I would just... you. Uh, only way I would approach it is if I see my friend changing for the worse. If I see, like, you know, okay, all relationships go through shit. Like, she may call me, you know, talk shit today about her nigga. Like, oh, fuck this nigga. This, this. That's like, girl, y'all, you're going to be in love with him tomorrow. Yeah. But if I see you literally, like, just... Losing weight, that's my problem. Yeah, lose the weight, change okay. yourself. You not... I don't know. Like, I can just see your health on the healthy Losing side. Hair. Like, don't I'm going to dress like, what's really good? Like, you know... <laughs> all the physical things. <laughs> yeah, you look sick. I'm only going to address it when it comes down to it. Like, I, I feel like I don't want to address none of my friends' relationship. Especially if they don't bring it to my attention. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the very only true. thing I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna say it one time, because I feel like I'm a very good judge of character. Like right off the bat, like if I don't like you, that's not going to change. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've made up my mind. I've seen what I need to see. Like that's it. So I'm only gonna say it one time. Like I don't like that nigga. That's the only thing I'm gonna say. I'm going to listen to everything else that you have to say, and I'm gonna ask you. What would you like for me to say yeah, at this point? Do, do you want me mm -hmm. to get into your ass? Because I can do that. Or do you mm -hmm. want me to just listen? Because I can do that too. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's it's their decision. Mm -hmm. Or it's like it's not up to me. Like I think my issue comes in with other people is when they let other people's problems like affect them deeply. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mm -hmm. like I'm just not gonna do that. Like at, it doesn't have nothing to do with me. You all right? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's my rule. If you decide to stay with that man, don't call me complaining because I don't need the negative energy. Yeah, you, I mean, you like it, I love it. I, you you decided to do it. For me, it's like you can. I you gotta. I feel like for certain friends, not every friend that I have or everybody that calls me their friend, but like for my my four direct friends that I deeply care about and their well being, I'm gonna be as honest as I can like I said I'm approaching like what type what type of time are we on right now are you want me to just listen and we cry together because I'm the one to provide the tears I'm here with you or do you want me to just you know tell you what's up with the the truth and paint it out of a, a clear concise picture mm -hmm. for you so it's like depends on it but I've learned that now when I was younger I would say like girl leave that nigga he ain't shit this and the third but now I approach it so much different I'm not one to tell you to leave your man but I can tell you you know, okay, friend, you hurt, and what what's going on? Mm -hmm. Is it where where is this hurt coming from? So I can allow you to figure it out by yourself. Show you where the problem is, and you navigate it on your own. I don't want to tell. No, I've been a friend to tell my friend leave that leave that person, but then also look at my friends to at the different. Why are you telling me to leave my man? That's weird. You know what I mean? But I just want to. You know, it is weird. Like, weird. Like, I don't tell me to leave my nigga. Like, but it's a way you can approach it. Like, if you see that I'm really going through something and I'm not okay, you can sit here and say, "What's up?" And we we hate this nigga. We, we, we hate him, this nigga. So we hate him. Oh, but we loving him. Oh, we love him. That's my brother. We locked in for life. Whatever you want to do. But I feel like I'm a, it's one of those, like, one of those type of topics where it's kind of, you got to be gentle with it because you don't want nobody to feel like or have the other person in space to feel like, oh, your friends don't like me. They're trying to manipulate you. I never want that to be the story. So I typically just try to give you the best advice and hopefully you take it. If you don't, you don't. But I'm still, I don't care how many times you come to me. I'ma listen. You been quiet. What you got to say? I, I just. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you hate that? <laughs> because, like, honestly, I just got out of a relationship that was like super manipulative and like had me living like any kind of psychosis type of thing. Like, I dropped out of school for this nigga, moved in his mom's basement with this nigga. Like, mm -hmm. he was sleeping on the floor. Like, you know, came in there on some dumb shit. Like, you know, but I, but I come from like. Like, I don't come from that, you know what I'm saying? I come from my parents, they got a two-parent household. Like, I kind of also want to touch on this earlier. Like, I'm at this stage where um, it's like you're learning. I got, I learned about all the childhood trauma, like a lot of childhood trauma that I went through. And then I, like, demonized my parents. So that's why I found him as my savior, kind of. Like, mm -hmm. I demonized yeah. Because he helped me recognize it. Mm -hmm. So I demonized my parents. And I'm like, I can't believe, like, this is what y'all do. Like, and I'm just telling them, like, this is, like, y'all do this, da 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 while they skip. But then now I'm at the point where realizing, like, he, 
they're just human beings like Ooh, you know like they have people, their trauma yeah they have their own trauma right. like they did exactly what they could do like my dad oh, forced so own. much like he did everything that he could do like and if i really would have listened to him when i was younger i would have never ended up there like mm -hmm. he really was been telling me like these niggas they don't love you they don't know what love is like i feel like a lot of us don't really know what love even is like mm -hmm. really, but you gotta go like, through five okay. ten years of that yeah. okay. too to we, really get yeah, you, you got to go point. through it to learn. Yeah. The reason why we can even answer these questions is because we've been there. Don't want to do that. Do you shit. do you think that do we anymore. would have to go through five or ten years of it, um, us personally experiencing it, if we have more um, two parent household, healthy two parent households? Mm -hmm. I think that like coming from coming from a two parent household, like my parents, they wasn't they not like um, they was not like toxic or abusive or nothing. Like you know they got their arguments and shit, but like they or people who what i realized are they people who learn how to survive like you know they live out of survival and like survival has taught them to has put them in this place of comfortability and now they're living their life that's it's comfortable like they're they're they have everything that they need everything that they want like they can easily you know get it at this time so like they don't want to switch up shit from before mm -hmm. and i think like it comes from i forgot the question <laughs> That's me. She said, like, practically, do you think we would have to go through what you said, like, five years or so mm -hmm. in a relationship to know what love is not if I there were more know. two parent yeah. households, healthy ones? I think I, that. I think it comes with listening. Like, listening. Like, Every human is going to have a different time frame. And I say that because I am a factual realist. Mm -hmm. So, how I said earlier, why are you addressing your man about something you're not leaving him for if he's going to continue to do it? Mm -hmm. Because you know he's a cheater. You argue with him, he cheats again. You argue with him, he cheats again. Why are you being delusional? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be rude to you. Why are you being delusional? Mm -hmm. Same as a friend. If you come to me every day or whatever the time frame is, complain about how this man, at you insert, what? And I'm gonna say this, bitch, because that's how I talk to my friends. Bitch, why are you calling? What do you want to talk about? Because mm -hmm. like we get that you're not gonna leave him. Why are you complaining about? Mm -hmm. You know this. Mm -hmm. so some people like, need that voice, yeah, though. You know, say, like some people need yeah. the big. And you know, I'm the tough love kind of girl. That's yeah. why. Yeah. And well, some people need the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me personally, I feel like having a friend like you and having a friend, the certain friendships have determined what I keep in. Mm -hmm. um, going through my twenties, I realized that everyone doesn't always have your best interest, friend or not. Yeah. Yeah. Friend or not. You know what I mean? Even if it sounds like it's, it's coming like, from a great place, they mm -hmm. might still not have your best. And interest. you sometimes we tend uh, to overshare, mm -hmm. and it's like I'm in a place where like I not saying I keep a lot of stuff to myself, but I I I do keep a lot of things yeah. to myself because okay. some friendships or some friends. They're not mature enough to have a conversation mm -hmm. with me. And I say, fuck my man. I'm done with him. He do X. I'm going to tell you all the bad things. Right, you know, but I'm going to tell you all the, bad, right, you know, all the bad things that he's doing. Granted, there's a million and 99 things that he's doing right, but I'm yeah. going to tell you only the negative in this moment. And then now I have to deal with you on the back end as a friend that you're not, you, I can't bring you around. You know my relationship. I can't, sh you know, love him openly without it being like a snickle yeah. or some background noise. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> so nobody likes my man. Like I'm just gonna throw that. <laughs> no, like, you don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him every day. Yeah. Um, oh my god. But I tell him like, like I don't like you right now. Like you're getting on my nerves. But like, well, you know, actually, you talk to everybody like that though. That's true. Yeah, that's like, oh, actually yeah. your personality. Right? Yeah. Yeah. She like, did say, I mean, if I don't like it, I just don't like it. It's yeah. not going to change. It's, 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 it's not, not, like, not going to change. But, like, I have to be really hurting to talk about yeah. what is going on in my relationship because I know that nobody likes him. So they're going to tell me everything as, that, to, why you as to why I should mm -hmm. go. But if that's not like where my head is at right now, then that's I'm either going you. to journal or I'm going to talk to my therapist because yeah. she has to listen to me because I'm paying her. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, then I so, have a question too. My fault. Go ahead and finish it. Um, shit, I'm sorry. So like I <laughs> have a friend who I love her dearly, but she can make all the mistakes in the world. And mm. nobody can say anything or have any type of reaction, but she can. So I know that that's not the person who that I'm going to talk to about what's going on in my relationship because she hasn't made up in her mind. She don't like him. She's not going to like him. Like that's not the energy that I like. I need it. It comes. 
chaotic. Oh my and gosh, wait, so I've graduated because at a point in time, like, she stopped telling me about her problems. But you actually have, kind of recently. Recently, just because of what I said earlier about, like... So I graduated, I'm not as judgmental. I wasn't talking about you. I know, I know. I know, but I'm saying, like, you know, I know for a fact I've been that judgmental bitch. Right, what yes. the fuck are you doing? See, I don't I'm judgmental. trying to to not be that because I, I have to understand where you are. Yes, that. I have you know to what understand. Saying? Yeah, you gotta I give your understand. friend a safe space because yeah. you know, if I'm coming to you, trust me, especially if you're a lot a lot like me suppressing things. If I'm cut coming to you, trust me, I already I already know what I need to do. I already mm-hmm. know the resolution. Mm-hmm. I'm coming to you because I gotta get this off my chest and I can't hold it in no yeah. more. Yeah. And I don't need you to sit here and tell me why you what what I need to do. I already know what I need to do. But you know what I've learned about females and also male and female friends i've learned that people who are not as close to you will give you better advice mm, true, and right? more support than a person who you feel like is locked in and does that make a person that is close to you that can't hear them hear what you're going through a good or a bad friend does that does that make that person a good or a bad friend at that moment i don't think sh- i don't think it makes you a bad friend i do think that you need to take a step back and like think about your words before you say them yeah because i used to be that person where i would just i would just pop off at the mouth i don't really care mm-hmm. how i said it how it came off if i felt like that's what needed to be said that it was going to be yeah. said but that's mm-hmm. like honesty does not have to be brutal it does yeah. not have yes. to be mm. it does not have to be hurtful um you give can get, me an oreo <laughs> <laughs> get your point across to me without calling me a dumb bitch or questioning Ooh. my mm-hmm. um, questioning my intelligence or why I'm doing certain things like you yeah. know why I'm doing them like it mm-hmm. is out of love and connection for this person so right. don't make me feel worse like hate right. yourself yeah, like, 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 I already, like, already beat right. myself like you said, up you, said, yes. you already know and I think that's the other important thing because you do already know what it is that you're doing and I think that's why I like to have friends that are all different because yeah. Gabby has taught me a lot in regards to myself and it's like what I say well just <laughs> yourself, like your lifestyle in general or the situation I'm not about to put it on blast but just like the situation that you have been in for a couple of years I mean I think at a point in time I'll be like girl what the fuck like I mean <laughs> what the fuck but I think me just trying to be more open and like I said trying to understand where you are and why you are holding on to this and just being a good friend because it really does bother me when I'm not a good friend or a, a good spouse or a good daughter mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yes. why, you know what I'm, that just really bothers me and yeah, I want to do the best that I can do to mm-hmm. be the best for the people that I love only for the people that I love because mm-hmm. the people that I do not care about you know you won't get two things from me and it doesn't make you a bad person for I'm sorry I'll let you talk but it, I, it doesn't make you a bad person I'm for sorry, staying in a, um, in a relationship <laughs> or anything no the thing I was gonna say is like I feel like we also need to normalize like Okay, for example, me and her, we cooks, right? You know, we done known each other since middle, whatever, back, about flats. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a point in time where, you know, someone came in my life, friend, where I was like, we all close, but, you know, I'm thinking, like, this other person is really that person for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, I'm still trying to be this person for her because at the day, like, you was here before all this, too. Yeah. But we also just have to normalize, no matter how big or small, like, a friend trying to be a friend. Everybody don't know how to be that friend in that moment. That's Everybody true. don't That's know true. what or advice to say, or, you know, or they can't even get it out. Or, you know, they going through their shit they sell, so they just kind of sit, they listen to you, but they're not engaging. Mm-hmm. We just have to appreciate what friends do do. No matter how small of a conversation, small yeah. of advice, your friend was there, you know what I'm saying, and they tried. I, I respect anybody yeah. that's trying. I think it's you know? important to, like, communicate. When it comes to friendship, we ain't talking about friendships right now, but just overall, when it comes to friendships or any type of relationship, just make sure that you communicate. Just like you would to yeah. your, your spouse, like, that you, you don't have to do... as much grace. Yeah, yeah. You and don't I have to do all that you would do for your spouse. I feel but, like relationship... I mean, I feel like friendships are relationships just without the yeah. intimacy. Yeah. 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 This is why I'll say this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like if you got a husband and he's doing good, let's say, for example, he starts doing drugs or maybe he is at work and his boss is physically beating him and harming him. Or, you know, I mean... We, we are black, I'm mixed. We understand that black men go through more. Let's say he's experienced racism in the office. I'm saying that to say, I'm a tough love person. 
So if you get any type of abuse, emotional, any type of unhappiness, I don't care where it comes from, including your partner or your husband, that's my job to get you out of that. That's my job to understand why you are mm -hmm. allowing yourself mm -hmm. to be unhappy. Again, what do you com you're literally crying, complaining, upsetting yourself. And I study, it's called psycho cybernetics, and that basically just to summarize it a negative thought changes your blood flow, your heart rate, mm -hmm. takes minutes, years, days off your life. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting over here and we could die tomorrow, tonight, driving home, and you're crying to me about a repetitive issue. Yes, I'm tough loving you because you are wasting your life away. You're killing yourself slowly regardless if you think about it or not. Mm -hmm. Stress is the number one killer. Mm -hmm. Depression rips um, muscle from your heart and will literally cause a heart attack. This is all mm -hmm. facts. You can look it up. So once you know shit like that, baby, if you stress me out, you're literally killing me. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, you know, yeah, like, you when a motherfucker care. is not fulfilling you no more, like, man, leave that yeah. shit. Like, not saying, like, the first time, but I'm just saying, not like, time, when yeah. somebody's just not fulfilling you mentally. My biggest thing right now, me, like, mentally, I go through a lot right now. Like, yeah. you know, not having we, my partner physically yes. and other things in my life. So, if you can't mentally have me um, support, it, support me mentally, so like, that's my big yes. thing. That's my biggest thing. Like, if we can't tap in there, bro, we ain't tapped in at all. And to <laughs> piggyback, tap the uh, like you said, the uh, negative thought. <laughs> uh, some, I don't know where I heard it from, but they said, for every positive thought, you have two negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I didn't, I never knew that because, you know, you say, I'm gonna be a millionaire. But then you got two thoughts. How are you going to be a millionaire? And uh, do you really deserve to be <laughs> able to be a millionaire? Yeah. So, like, I feel like you have to focus on the positive mm -hmm. in any situation, any relationship, any any type yeah. of situation you're in. Just Because if you're focused on the positive, the negative can never win. Mm. Plus, Ooh. I'm not about to ever be tough love to regular shit arguing, bumping heads. I'm talking about abuse. I'm talking about you're literally physically dying. You're literally sick. You are losing yourself. You stop going to work. Your kids are not fed. You're not brushing your teeth. Mm. We're girls. Why are we not pretty? Mm. You're not getting pretty? Because mm -hmm. I know you don't do that for no man. Mm -hmm. You're not getting pretty? Yeah. You're not doing your hair? You're not, pretty. You're, not, you're not looking at yourself in the mirror? Yeah. You didn't buy yourself a new shirt? Mm. Come on now. Amen. So one thing I'm going to do is look pretty. Up here. <laughs> no, for real, I would say that going into 2023, I'm like, you know, like even with this wig, like this is new for me. Like I don't do this shit, but I'm like, you know, just try, like you say, as a girl, I want to tap into more feminine side. I want to yeah. just be girly, feel good. When you look yeah. good, you feel good. That should be your number one priority every day when you wake up. Everybody hates makeup, but I feel like I am the team. I love makeup because the moment you put that brush on an eyebrow to the moment you put that set of spray, your mood has changed. Yeah, you could have sat there putting on. Uh, I have had had it happen to me that the moment I'm doing my brows, by the end of the time I didn't conceal my brows and my brows, was, I'm like, okay, yeah. bitch. Yeah. I, I see the fuck you doing. I'm over yeah. my car looking at myself like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you look good, yeah. you feel yeah. good. Yeah. And I think yeah. if we prioritize looking good, yeah. prioritize ourselves. Yeah. We prioritize yeah. ourselves yeah. looking good, not for anybody else, but to when you walk past that mirror, you walk past, bitch, bitch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She'll make fun of me, but like, my nails are done. My toes yeah, are Abby in. Can't see. Like, no, <laughs> Abby literally. I am self care. And you know self care. What? That's what my mom. She's like that. My mom. She no matter what. Every two weeks she get her hair done. Every two weeks she's getting her nails and toes done. Like it's it's a, a schedule. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. I got a whole nail polish nail kit at my house. Oh, yeah, I did my toes myself. ain't done right now. My nails ain't done. But it's like I want to work on that because I feel like as a woman, stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready. Yeah. What if Because it's easier to complain versus to make a change. Yeah. The harder mm -hmm. to me in a relationship, the easiest thing to do is to stay in a relationship. The hardest thing to do mm -hmm. is to leave a relationship. I think it's That's because fair. you probably feel guilt 
I don't really have this issue when it comes to men that I date. Because I'll leave a man. I'll leave you. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to my father, which is the next episode, I do have an issue with leaving. And it's more so the what ifs. What if something happens tomorrow then I didn't? Should I really even feel bad? Because no, I shouldn't probably. Yeah. But that part for me is like the part that keeps me. All right. Well, I guess you said that you were going to try. Well, I guess I do understand. And it's like, I, I can understand, but it still doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. And if you were any other man, you would be gone. That's the, yeah. that's the <laughs> part. It's, it's, that's the blood. it's societal. Like you don't leave because you've been ingrained in as a woman that you have this biological clock mm. and mm. you can do something to change him so why would you start over with somebody else like, oh like completely um and like approaching 30 i'm thinking about that a lot more it's like fuck, do i really want to start over like no i don't <laughs> like, well, why, but, why do you got to start over start over why not just never settle i just talked to my therapist about that yesterday um what we she, talked about earlier was being an open relationship Huh? Just being in an open relationship. Which I sounds know. like you. I am yeah. in an open relationship. Oh, yeah, she said she don't believe so don't, in love. So don't let that affect you. Whatever. Like, it, I, it, I, I, <laughs> oh, monogamy. Yeah. Yeah. She said she don't believe in so, love. So, like, <laughs> there are, like, different <laughs> levels to, like, polyamorous, polyamorous relationships. There are people who are single poly where they have partners, but, like, they're not, they don't necessarily have a primary partner. I have a primary partner and I look for other partners outside of that. So mm -hmm. I want my married. primary relationship to be married and then we are with the other people and we are aware of the other people as well. Yeah. Um, is that yeah. happening right now? No. <laughs> um, Why not? So you, I can't get into that. Okay, that's so are you, <laughs> so I'm saying, so once you get married, like you okay with your husband married. having, we talked about this earlier, you okay with your husband having a hall pass as long as you know about it? I don't call it a hall pass. Like <laughs> it's, he a has, it's, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. So he's it's like hey, even babe, before we define this blood as non-monogamy, um, I knew that this was something that he needed, even if he did it. Because at first it was just like he was cheating, mm -hmm. and but. You couldn't tell me that he didn't care about me because he's showing me that he is. So, so let me ask you this because this is this is perfect timing. Okay. Next one. Do you feel like women accept polyamory to erase the fact that they're getting cheated on? Oh. Mm. Not if you're a cheater uh. too. And I say cheating because if it's okay with your partner, it's not cheating. But if she's open and she's sleeping around too, there's no. So for me personally, if we identify that we're gonna be monogamous in the beginning, and that's what, that what made our relationship, I'm not gonna. And you're a repeated cheater. I'm not gonna reward you by saying, okay, well you can't seem to keep it in your pants, and you can't seem to just focus on our loyalty and monogamous relationship. Let's go ahead and be polyamorous. I wouldn't do that. So I feel like sometimes if if you're in a monogamous relationship and the cause for the reason why now you're poly is to make it okay for him i don't think it's okay but if you're doing it for yourself that's another and that was a day one agreement i feel like it can change i feel like if me and my spouse were in a relationship and you know i'm mean, like the hard pass but i, I have said to them like I, I'm okay with my man doing a hot. I'm I'm okay with me. I, I forget the other person. I'm really about self. I'm 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 team okay like with taking the hall pass. You feel me? I'm okay with like let's be, we won together, but I also have to acknowledge myself. So I'm okay with us doing a hall pass and whatever you want to do with that hall pass, that's up to you. But what what I'm saying is, if we're in a relationship, and you know, say down the line, and I'm like, and we have a conversation. What do you think about other people? And me and him have a, a conversation, and he says. I'm okay with you dating other people and I'm okay with I'm okay with him dating other people but we're still the foundation of the relationship mm -hmm. then that's that's a change yeah. but I'm not going to reward right. bad behavior if that makes yeah. sense mm -hmm. that's right so like for a while for a while our relationship was long distance mm -hmm. and I'm a very sexual person and it wasn't working for me like mm -hmm. not getting my needs met as often <laughs> yeah. as I <laughs> no, would funny. like so I dated a couple um i was allowed to go out and be with other men as long as he was aware that that what was happening um so i didn't have an issue when it was actually brought to my attention that this is something that we could do in the tribe but it's not like an overnight thing because i'm going to take it to society again mm -hmm. we are told that we are that if this person is not all about you 
then they don't love you. And I don't mm. think that that's... Because I've been loving that's... and I've You know, my second boyfriend, I cheated on him the first six months, but there's nothing you can tell me about that man that I didn't love him. Mm-hmm. Like, because like, I loved him. People think cheating is an end-all, be-all. Like, oh, we were just saying that. Like, <laughs> lying is the end-all, end, be-all. End that's all, what be she all. said, yeah. Being with... Mm-hmm. Cause sex is sex. It's not that big of a deal to me. Like, it's like a hug. Like you know, it's just like a, a hug then with a, with a jacket you know, on. You feel me? That yeah. slipped up dick in me. You feel me? But you know, I you do feel you like. I feel like lying is my. If I can't trust you to just be, if I ask you is the sky blue, and I can clearly see the sky blue, but you tell me it's green. Like what the fuck you got going on? Like, you know what I mean? I could be up to. He's colorblind. You, <laughs> since I know he got the eyes checked. You know what I mean? He's going to love the thing. So, right. <laughs> so like, it's good that you have that opinion. Like you know what I mean? The way you broke it down, I really appreciate it because I feel like a lot of women don't look at it from there, and so society is like, oh, if we see like, oh, it's two girls and one guy in a relationship on Facebook and goes viral, right? Yeah. We're seeing that is, oh, that man manipulated them women to want to do that. Mm-hmm. But you kind of brought it to a different like, like, fuck him, it's me too. I like fucking bitches and I like fucking niggas too. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna take it to Chloe and Tristan because that's like um, the okay. main thing that I can say is that he. I think he loved Chloe. He just, there was something in him that he couldn't say, this is what I need um, at the very beginning. Like sometimes I will like to sleep with other people. Like I feel like if he brought that to her attention in the beginning, we wouldn't have the Jordans and the other baby mamas and all that other stuff. But mm-hmm. like, if you can't be honest with yourself about who you are, then you can't be honest with somebody else mm-hmm. about. Cause I'm okay are. with both open poly all that monogamous but i want you to tell me so i know what i'm getting myself into let me make that choice mm-hmm. and i prefer monog- i prefer you to be my one and only that's my preference but if you tell me i'm allowed to sleep around and you're allowed to sleep around okay men take that choice away from us way too often mm-hmm. yes. and i think that's Put my own down. issue like mm-hmm. do not make the decision for me do not decide that I'm going to get mad, so okay. you're just not going to tell me. Like that's gonna piss me off more because not only have you lied to me, you have now taken away one of the only things that I have that's free is my my own my, thought. my own thought and choice and choice. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of women are open minded and men are just scared to and most women are i'm saying this like most women are gonna go so if you tell me if i'm I'm feeling your vibe and not me not me personally but if i'm feeling your vibe and you so happen to be bisexual if you let me know and let me make that decision a lot i've seen it a lot of women are gonna be like all right you like to do that we're gonna go for me that's you know not not what i prefer but as long as you let me make that choice and let you know yes or no that's okay you gotta be you think about it a female going to date a dude with 10 kids you allow her to make that choice if she want to still deal with you and your 10 baby yeah. mamas. But if you say you only got one kid or no kids. And then they keep popping up. My heart, because if they keep popping up, my heart is breaking constantly. Because I feel like. Because mm, I feel like I knew. Right. And I look dumb. Now, and now to the world, it's like, you just, it's, he just popping up with kids on you, girl. Mm. But I think that we as women need to stop jumping in with strangers. And when we do, don't get shocked and surprised when they mm. are. Because everyone Ooh, is a stranger yeah. to I you. I feel like, so for me. I feel like a lot of time as women, we when we get out of a relationship, we don't take that time to mm-hmm. date. I was single for three years before right. I got with my dude yeah. who I'm with. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I feel like I kind of, you know, was able to do three years at a long time, but I was able to still have that space before jumping into another relationship. Mm-hmm. We also always want to put a title on something so quick. That's so, my that's yeah. my relationship right now. I'm like, nigga, I'm going to be your bitch today, nigga, or you can leave right now. You well, feel me? Like, for real, like, that's how I had to put it to him, but when I look back at it, I should have took a step back because before I knew it, I look up, this nigga and his son living with me. Right. That ain't shit that I agree to, but okay, we doing it, let's do it. And often yeah. we just find ourselves in a situation. Yeah. We can, we can, we can title it as a relationship, but it really at that time is a situation mm-hmm. because y'all still getting to know each other. You don't even know what the fuck his favorite color is. You don't even know yeah. what the fuck his favorite food is. Y'all even know what damn son's doing. You don't even know how to cook. Just like man, they claim somebody as ours that ain't yours nigga you don't even know this nigga right you said something like i don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with taking the time from relationship to relationship like because you watch i watch men break up with somebody they could be heartbroken but they're on to the next bitch and they didn't take the time to heal and then they're doing the same same. then that that girl's pregnant then this girl lives with him then that girl this one's sad this one's crying like you are 
taking your hurt and then giving to somebody else because you don't know how to be alone. Mm -hmm. Like most men do not know how to be. Mm -hmm. And so when you can themselves. be there every night, five days in a row, but the night that you're not there because you're with your friends, your family, he's so desperate to be with somebody, he's calling somebody else. Bruh. They don't love you, but lover boys. I think a lot of a lot of men. Boys, oh my God, I don't even think they're lover boys. I feel like they need ex. companionship. A lot of men oh. need that companionship. They're always most men. They don't live with no. They don't ever have their own. They only live with their mom Damn and their women. They don't have mm. nothing to them. So today, they can't identify themselves. Mm. Well, that's all of our, us as women need to have the standards, too. If we're sleeping with a stranger, understand just that. They're a stranger. Mm. Period. If that's okay. not your... I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. If that's not your husband, he made no commitment to you. Mm. Why do you treat this boyfriend, this situation, like your spouse? Mm. I, I'm guilty of that all the time. I love nurturing. That is my love language. Mm -hmm. I want to rub your feet, run you a bath. I'm pee. Yes. I smoke. I want to roll you a blunt and have you <laughs> in that bath. Yes. I want to yes. right. make you breakfast, lunch, dinner. I want my off days. I come surprise you with. I'm a nigga at heart. I'm what? a I'm a tricking ass nigga at heart. Like, I'm, I'm a tricking. I'm a you know. I'm a buy you shoes. I'm a buy you shoes. Flowers. Keep it like you need a car. You know what I mean? Like a house. Like you know what I mean? I'm not think. Dudes kind of like, like you say, we tend to jump into a situation and just go with the flow. Because even my man, like, when we first got together, like, I was really trying to, he was supposed to be a, I told him, I was like, you were supposed to be a one night stand. That was it. This is the best but, one, he, you hear me? <laughs> 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 no, I'm engaged. But, <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Now, he started doing something. Like, I remember he, like, I'll never forget. He was like, oh, I'm about to go get a U Haul moving. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, this nigga's serious. But I'm like, okay, if you want to do that? That's cool. And then, next thing you know, him and his kid over here, and it's like, you just go with the flow because it's like opportunity presented itself so let's just go with the flow but sometimes we gotta identify what we truly want yes. because we're not identifying yes. that we're just going with the flow and allowing things to happen don't know. Yeah. I think you're going with a lot of times people are going with the flow because they don't know you know, a lot of times we know we just caught in a moment a lot of like or something you, you, you take a you take your situation prior and be like okay you know this is what I've been through whoop de whoop but then you got somebody who every the honeymoon stage always good always mm. good and they don't have to do it exactly the honeymoon stage always good so I feel like yeah every three months I think for me I I really I think for me I just really didn't know I went through a a period of time where I was very naive I was very um. I, I wouldn't say I was sheltered necessarily. Oh, okay, kids, no, I would say for sure I was sheltered, but my mom was more understanding because she was raising me in a different generation than all of my cousins were raised. So like, I was sheltered, but then when I went and found out something, my mom would be like, oh, okay, and then you know we talk about whatever. But for the most part, I just was completely ignorant. So mine came from ignorance. I didn't know, yeah. and once I found shit out, then I'm like, oh no, I don't, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my life, and I'm starting to learn, is trial and error. You know, like, okay, trial and error. And I have to accept that because for a long time, you know, when you're um, in, under your, your parents' house, it's right and wrong. Ain't no trial and error. Right? Yeah. So then I have to, like, really learn, like, okay, this is okay for me to, like, try this and be like, no, I don't like it. And it goes yeah. back to what you were exposed right. versus what you genuinely mm -hmm. like. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. kind of what my... So, so to say what she said, like, I've only been in two serious... Like, I've dated. I've had mm -hmm. boyfriends, but I've only been in two serious relationships. only been in love twice. Me too. First one, bugaboo. Prison. Bugaboo. She said that. I'm not even going to get it. That's so cute. That's cute. Aww. He is cute. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, you know who you are. Okay. <laughs> He like, yeah, that be me, me. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> he fought, no, sorry. So no, but like, like, my second boyfriend from Dublin, I and mean, he's he's mixed, but that man was white. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm talking about tight shorts. I'm talking about the mm -hmm. little, the little um, mm -hmm. golfing clothes. Yeah, <laughs> the hoochie daddy. Hoochie daddy. He was so. Yeah. He was so um, bitch. complete opposite from the first. Mm -hmm. I love them equally, and I realized I love this about this man, and I love this about this man, right? So now I, I'm very particular about who I call my man. You can be my hoe. And that's what I tell men all the time. You can take a number. You can be my hoe. I'm going to treat you just like that. Mm -hmm. If you cannot lead my household better than me, I cannot submit to you. And I will never treat you like a man because I am more of a man than you are. Mm -hmm. That's not my problem. Mm -hmm. what, would, would you be in a relationship ongoing with a man that you identify can't run because sometimes men can't run your house better than you can but he's a good companion would you could you be in a relationship with someone who can't lead you well so with with that being said with my submissions 
right? And submission works both ways. When I say 100%, 100%, to me, it's not about category. I'm not saying, oh, I, I paid 50% of the bills. Mm-hmm. Oh, I did 10 dishes. You got to do 10 dishes. I'm saying you are supporting me. You are my partner. You are my backbone. And we, we do this equally. And the days I'm sick, you do more. Mm-hmm. The days you're sick, I do more. Mm-hmm. And I'm and this is a side topic we get into if you want. Even if I'm married with children, I want to treat it co-parenting wise. I mm-hmm. want my two days to myself mm-hmm. so I can work on my dreams, mm-hmm. my yoga, mm-hmm. my friends. And guess what, baby? Don't worry about the kids on Thursdays and Fridays. Mm-hmm. We get co-parent as a married couple. That's your day. Mm-hmm. Go 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 do whatever the fuck you want to do. And on, on the rest of the week, we're parents. We're this happy Brady bunch, etc. I've never mm-hmm. seen that, so I don't know if they're happy. <laughs> Pretty much happy, I don't know. Mm-hmm. They're happy, they just went out in the 1960s. But, you know, so it's, interesting. it's not about leading because I feel like I'm smart in finances. So naturally, I'm going to be good with money. I'm an accountant. You want to do mine? Mm-hmm. I well, yeah. No, so I dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I got you, though. I, I'll put you in the right direction. But with that being said, Me too. I, yeah, she was so, like, no, I mean, I got all y'all. business card, business card. <laughs> but um, with that being said, though, I understand that there's some things that I can't do. So my man has to be able to do that. And mm. and the, and I never lead with, because, you know, they got this stereotype about independent women. I never lead with, oh, I got my own money. I just simply say, I know how to lead when you lose your job, when you get sick. I'm, I've done it already. But if you want to be a stay-at-home mom, that's what the fuck I'm going to do, because I can. I can cook. I can clean. But I also can work, and I also can rub you down, mm-hmm. and I also can talk to you with your about your emotions. So it's like, what do you need? Mm-hmm. I know I'm I'm whole, mm-hmm. so I'm not gonna settle. If you can only provide dick, mm-hmm. and you cannot make me come, baby, I'm not respecting you. <laughs> but you can make me come. I think that's fine. You have ten points. I'll call Sorry, you when I'm you horny, and that might be once every three months. Yeah. All right. I feel like every na- I, side note. I feel like before you go in a relationship, everybody needs to have had a good fuck buddy. Mm-hmm. Somebody that you no, can that's gonna ruin your relationship. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying, no, I'm saying, I said, I said, I said, I said before you're in a relationship, like as a single woman, I feel like imagine every- getting the best dick of your life, then you start fucking your husband, and he ain't him. Well, I mean, if that, I mean, like, if you stand a boundary and you like, okay, so I've, I've had, I have, I had a, a fuck buddy, but this is when I was single, so this it allowed me to fuck with him and date holy men, like you know, he wanted more, but I couldn't give him, like, but you were just to me, okay? But it allowed me to be able to date with a clear mind, because I'm, if your your focus was on sex. That wasn't my priority. I was able to go right. in it and date and really figure out who you are as a person. But having that allowed me to open up sexually because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of women is say we meet somebody, we date him, we like him as a person, and then we end up being in a, a lot of women are in relationship with bad dick ass niggas. That's my yeah. point. So, so the point of the How fuck, do you not pinky pinky. Yeah, but I'm saying, but I'm saying the point of it is that you would know. Cause that man felt made you feel so good. You would know that once I bust this nigga down and he can't do that. If everything is good, I can't fuck with you like that. Mm-hmm. Because it, 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 sex is gonna be so good for you, and you gonna want certain things from me. Why do I have to settle with you if you're not able to improve your sex? Yeah. And, and if it, if it's just because I feel like size is size, but if size you can't, size, but if you can't, if you can't improve, if you can't improve on your dick game and want want to fulfill me as your person, then I ain't gotta fuck with you. Mm-hmm. Cause, so I feel like having a fuck buddy allows you to explore that sexual side and really figure out what do you, what t- are you a clitoral comer or are you a, a penetration comer? It, it, it helps you. So for those innocent girls with low body counts, <laughs> don't do it. You're not going to find a good Your body, body count does not define mm-hmm. you as stupid. Yeah. It's something I'm that you... I'm 20 and I have had more than 28 dicks. But I'm saying, what's the point of having a lot of dicks when you can have one consistent motherfucker that got good dick God because this head. man can pick you up. This man kisses your back. This man talks. But that's added to me. That's added a man. lot of people like into my mix when I can just fuck a person. I mean, I guess we can agree to disagree because I just yeah. feel like you because some STDs are high. Yeah. So especially when you're out here dating, because yeah, it's easy to have a good night and go home and want to do like I have a, a nightcap and then now you're fucking somebody and you wasting your time. Versus you can have a good day and we have fun. I know dude go out to get me right. I know I know dude about to get me about to get me all. It seems it'd be so hopeful when you tell them bye at the end of the night and like it just it was a wholesome day. It was you know, it was something. And nice it's good, you don't have to feel obligated to the next to the next okay. step. I feel like you have to be able to date with a clear mind. And when sex is at the forefront of your mind, so it's not clarity. 
Girls got it too. Right. <laughs> but I'll be like, I need to be able to see you in a light and be like, mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. oh, no, that's right. My primary oh. partner likes to hear about my sex with the non primary partner. No. I'm a watcher. Like, like, in, I detail. Get that. in detail. What? I'm a watch. I watch and you tell him right in now. detail? I'll watch your oh, fuck right now. Oh. All right, all right, all right. We're going to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> oh. We're we going to put this in this episode. <laughs> Share, do all that because if you don't, I'll beat your ass. Because what? All you have to do is tap, 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 t